for this little trigger object, I'm going to show you a couple different ways to create this. The first way will be along the lines of what we've been doing, which is uh, more of a, a low poly box modeling method with the Z modeler. And then I'll uh, bring it back and show you a way to do it with more of like a high poly method with the uh, clip curve. So in our subtool menu here, let's go ahead and append just another poly mesh 3D star and initialize it. I'm just going to move this in place basically uh, just by masking, flipping the mask, and then you know, moving something. work off of a box and then move our way through these points. So we're going to insert single edge loop. Make sure we clear our mask. Have an edge loop in there. We can shift F. You can kind of see it in there. Uh, go back into one in our fill mode. You can definitely see it. So we'll just start moving some things around. Let's get this area extruded out. We have to go to poly group, a single poly. I'm holding uh, left with my stylus or mouse, pressing the Alt key on the keyboard. I'm just changing it to a color that is pretty easy to see. I'm just trying to establish a basic contour of this. And you're better off, uh, you know, when you're working to information that's kind of limited in terms of pixels you're better off going a little bit beyond it than uh, than inside of it okay so this is going to be a little bit more of the dynamic uh, subdivision way of doing things i'm going to put it in solo mode just so we can take a look at this and turn the floor off so one of the first things i want to do is go under poly groups and just you know do a group by normals and see what my results are. And I think what I'm going to do is add a couple other poly groups to this. I'm going to create a new poly group out of that. And I'm just going to change the color so that it's easy to see. We've got these poly groups separated. We've got them separated here to here, here. I went ahead and slid some of these edges around, and that's an edge command to slide an edge. Just kind of straighten things out a little bit. I'm going to also insert some edge loops in a few places. And if you hold left, go up with that, you should get what you need. Create a couple that way. something that's a little bit more to a square cut then we can go into our poly groups and so I'm going to have to set the 33 group it by normals gives me just about what I want I'm gonna deselect those 
close control W, bring that back, created a new poly group. Let's go ahead and duplicate this. I just tend to work on a duplicate when I'm doing dynamic subdivisions because I have to end up beveling things and cutting into them and I don't want to destroy the original work that I had in case I have to use a different convention. Let's go ahead and increase these. So once I get these bevels established, um, I'm not going to go ahead and crease any more polygroups. I'm just going to go into the dynamic subdivisions. I'm going to put my flat subdivisions at about 1. And if you, just to sort of give you an idea, flat subdivisions are going to, you know, do more of a faceted, unsmoothed subdivision. Whereas the smooth ones will give you something that's a little bit more interpolated. Maybe a little bit of issues around in here, but that's not too bad that we can't uh, use some of the polishing tools to fix that. But what I really wanted to get was just a nice uh, distinct highlight in the form transitions. And if you wanted to make the bevel a little bit larger, you can go ahead and do that as well. I'm going to keep it about like this. I might go back and do a couple more iterations to this, but I'm going to, I'm going to leave this like this for the sake of this demo, uh, for this, this dynamically subdivided version. So make sure you're working on a duplicate. Once you get it to where you want it, just go ahead and hit apply. Uh, you know, check your sub tool, and then you can you can go under deformation and you can just do you know a polish maybe a couple times just polish your results a little bit kind of soften you know any sort of abruptness in some of those transitions and you'll get something that looks pretty good uh, you'll get pretty good transitions. Now I might want to create a negative space in here and we're going to talk about that a little bit later when we get into live booleans. In another video I'm going to show you another version of how to create this using some of the clip curves.